Bonjour. Excellent. So the, the next talk is about accessibility in law and what it means to free software and open source. Yeah. I um, was hoping to do the presentation in French, but I was informed that that might not fly too well with you guys, so I will stick to English. My name is Nick. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Vavroom. And um, obviously, I'm a person with disability, but I have non-visible disabilities as well. I uh, happen to have arthritis, which makes it really hard to hold books and handle other things. And I'm um, hard of hearing. So if you speak at me from behind and I don't answer, it's not because I'm rude. It's just I didn't hear you. Thank you. Um, the point of that is there's a lot of people that have disabilities out there, and it's not necessarily easy to see them. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, I've been involved with FOSS for a number of years. Uh, I was a core team member for Mambo and for Joomla and with B2 Evolution as well. And I've been using both desktop and web-based applications um, that were open source for a number of years. I've also been in business um, for a long time. Um, the largest business I was running was a small nonprofit in the States. Now, what they call a small nonprofit in the States was running with a budget of $1 million a year. So it's not so small when you compare it to uh, Australia and New Zealand. And I've been involved in doing disability or in training for a good 15 years now. So. I have a bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. If you have any uh, questions, obviously, um, feel free to ask. Uh, I think the format is at the end, so ask whenever you, um, whatever you want. I have a few assumptions for this presentation. The first one is that I'm not going to go in depth. This is really just uh, an introduction to the ideas, is to make you think. Um, the other is that you want your um, FOSS project to be successful. And I define success as the number of sales. Now, when I talk about sales, I'm talking more on a business approach, but I don't necessarily mean commercial sales. F sales can be the number of downloads you get, the number of people that install your product. So basically, you want a lot of people using your software. That, that's the basic assumption. Keep in mind that we're not in the business of writing software. I'll repeat that because it's important. We're not in the business of writing software. We're providing solutions for people. People out there, whether it's businesses, nonprofits, governments, they have issues that they hope to solve. And our software is a solution for them. Um, Basically, we want to make our clients' lives easy, as easy as possible. And to have an edge on the competition, our solution must make their lives easier. So if software A does three things well and software B does four things well, it's likely that the client or whomever is going to choose the software is going to use software B. Does that make sense so far? There's three markets that um, tend to be f uh, targeted by uh, FOSS projects that are fairly difficult to get in, two especially, uh, government organizations and uh, tertiary level uh, organizations, so universities, uh, community college, and all that. Those two markets are fairly difficult to get in because there is a lot of requirements. And then, of course, there's medium and large businesses that tend to have a preference for something we have to pay for because if we don't pay for it, it's no good. Um, so the um, government, whether it's the government department themselves or government-funded agencies and um, tertiary tertiary-level tertiary organization um, have 
one major requirement in a lot of countries, and that is accessibility. Now, when we're talking about many countries, we're talking about New Zealand, Australia, United Kingdom, uh, Canada, United States, Italy, Germany, France. Um, so it, it's pretty much all the areas that we really want to get into. Europe, um, the States, America, and Australasia. All these countries have either legislation or regulations that say access to electronic information must be available to everyone regardless of impairment. This is especially true for government. Uh, in the States, I don't know if you've heard of Section 508 of the Vocational Rehabilitation Act 1974 as amended 2001. Uh, basically, that's the big, um, the big regulation in the states that say all government websites must be accessible to people with disabilities. Now, what people don't realize is it's not just the website, it's also any type of electronic material must be accessible, not just to visitors to the websites, but also to employees. So the... Um, the need for accessibility just gets bigger. It's not just people going to websites, it's people working there that may need not only the website accessible, but also the applications they use. Um, it impacts businesses because if, um, if the site or the way they do business is not accessible, then there's a potential of losing business, but there's also a potential of um, not being able to hire people, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, the big thing is not everybody knows about these requirements. You talk to uh, universities, you talk to businesses, you talk to even government departments, and they just don't know. So as FOSS developers, we really can show them we have their interest at heart. Here's my solution. Here's my software. And it is better than other people because I'm helping you complying with your legal requirements. Keep that in mind. We're here to help you comply with your requirements, whether they know it or not. And suddenly they go, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. So you really can get an in that way. The other aspect, of course, is um, anti-discrimination legislation. And that comes into play um, for example, say I have a business that has 500 employees and I'm just about to hire someone to develop a bespoke system and we spend a year and a half building the thing and it's not working for people with disabilities and suddenly I open a new position and someone with a disability apply for this job I can't give the job because they won't be able to use the tool to do the job because the software is not accessible. So it's opening your client's business to, to lawsuits, which you don't want. So if you help people think through those steps, you can convince them that your solution is better because it is accessible, considering that the vast majority of applications out there are not built with accessibility in mind. Um, disability is protected class uh, in those discrimination areas. Uh, so there's uh, gender, sexual uh, preferences, there's age, there's a whole range of things that are protected by discrimination legislation that covers uh, your clients. So it by making your application more accessible, or fully accessible ideally, you really can open up new markets. You want to tap into government, you want to tap into universities, and reach those markets. When you talk to them, or if you just advertise on a website, depending on how you 
um, convince people to use your system, um, tell them it's accessible. Tell them why it's good that your system is accessible. And um, you'll end up with new markets. I know I'm repeating myself saying that new markets and, and accessibility, but that's really the message here. Build it and you will find takers. Disability types. So what's a disability? Well, it's any condition that impacts one or more activity of daily living. And that can be walking, that can be seeing, that can be hearing, that can be um, unable to use a mouse. I only use the keyboard because the mouse is difficult on my wrists. So if your software requires me to click on something, I'm not going to be able to use your software. Whereas if you set it up with proper tab flow, I can actually tab through the application and then use the space bar or the enter key to, um, to activate. So these things are important to think about. When we talk about accessibility, it's not just people who are blind or have vision issues. There's all kinds of things. Um, someone who's deaf, if your software uses audible clues only for feedback without visual clues, then someone who's deaf is not going to get the ding. So you have to consider these things. Um, mobility and dexterity disabilities, well, it's the ability to use a keyboard or not, the ability to use a mouse or not. Uh, some people use on-screen keyboard. How does your software interact with on-screen keyboards? How does your software interact with being able to zoom really close in? These things are issues to be considered when you uh, develop that. Um, learning and cognitive disabilities are not seen very often in terms of business, yet it is something to think about. If you have explanations or help file, make sure you read them as clearly and simply as possible. Um, health files do tend to be written by people that really don't know how to write health files because it's the developer, they're good at coding, and then unless you're a developer, you're going to have a problem reading those files. Uh, think of the poor guy that has dyslexia that really has problem reading. How are you going to make these files easier for them to read? I covered that a bit. Uh, what is accessibility? Is um, an accessible software is one that can be used by everybody regardless of impairment types or uh, assistive devices. So can a screen reader application like JAWS or um, Windows Eyes, can that interact well with your application? Um, can you use your application web uh, keyboard only? Do you have a simple workflow to your application? Or do you have to open window one, then window two, then window three, then go back to window one to complete one task? How is that workflow going? Is it making it easier? Uh, no dependence on sound, color, that kind of things. Build redundancy. A user can turn off images or can turn off sound if it bugs them. But if it's not available, the person that needs it won't have it. Now keep in mind that accessible software usually makes lives easier for every users out there. So accessibility benefits everyone. What we're aiming for is not a win-win situation. It's a win-win-win-win where everybody really wins. You win because you can sell, provide, expand your product to more markets. The client wins because it helps them with better compliance. It helps them with fi finding um, qualified employees that uh, may not be able to work there if the tools are not accessible. It is a win for people with disabilities because then they can have access to information and to software. And finally, FOSS wins because by providing this in more um, 
providing software in more areas, then people are starting to talk more about, hey, this great software is open source. We can adapt it. We can get it for free for non-commercial software and all that. So it's, um, it's really a good situation. Now, I've said what you should do. I didn't say how you should do it because um, talking about the accessibility requirements is really uh, could take the whole day. But I'm planting an idea for you to think about what you could do to improve your applications. Now, there's not a lot of information about how to make um, software accessible, but there is a lot of information about how to make websites accessible. And the principles of building accessible websites really do apply to software in general, whether it's web-based application or desktop applications. You can look at the WCAG, which is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. That's on the W3C's website. And the other one is ATAG, which is the Authoring Tools Accessibility Guidelines. It's also on uh, W3C's website. Between those two, you will get plenty of ideas on how to make your applications accessible and working for, um, for you, for people with disabilities, and for a lot of clients. If you get stuck, you can go and see my website, accessibility.net.nz, and I'll be glad to give you a hand. Now, I zoom through that really quickly. Um, I, hopefully, you have questions, and hopefully, I can answer you. No questions. Pardon me? No, the URL is correct. It's w3.org. How do you find, in general, free software's take up on um, accessibility? My answer is not very politic. It sucks. Um, I have been driven to distraction and frustration, and it's a miracle I'm not hairless. Um, convincing developers in general that accessibility is um, really important, it's mission critical, is uh, really difficult. And there's a few people that um, say, hey, yeah, okay, we'll do this, but it's really being paying lip service to it, and um, sometimes it really feels like hitting yourself against a brick wall. That said, there are applications out there that are offering uh, greater accessibility. Um, Moodle, for example, is a system that up until about three years ago was totally unusable by people with disabilities, and they have done a huge effort to turn that around to the point where um, at least users of Moodles, not necessarily those people that develop the Moodle sites, but the users, the students, the teachers can use the system with a variety of disabilities. So th there is some good stuff, but by and large, my experience is that um, software is not particularly user-friendly for accessibility. Um, how, how far can simply um, observing standards take you? That surely is only half the battle. As with any other software, you need practical testing. Observing the standards is uh, mission critical. It will get you nearly all the way there. Now, standards are not perfect. One of the things that was very obvious with the old web content accessibility guidelines were um, one of the guidelines say to define access keys for websites. So they said basically all your links should have access keys. 
except that 75% of blind users did not like access keys because nobody used the same access keys from one side to the other. So something that was supposed to be very helpful became more confusing than anything. Now, in the uh, second version of the WCAG, the access key requirement has been removed. What that means is that the standards are very good, but they don't necessarily mean that everything in the standards is perfect. And you will also find several situations where uh, specific users don't like what the standards say. If I compare it to building accessibility, uh, the code in New Zealand, in Australia, in Canada, in the United States said that the ramp should be this steep, 1 in 12. Well, 1 in 12 is too steep for a lot of people, but it's still the standard. Same thing with software. There are things that work very well, and there are things that don't work so well. In the end, if you have access to people with various disabilities to test the software, by all means do it. Um, try to find someone that knows this software. Uh, a good example is a lot of uh, web developers are downloading JAWS, which is a screen reader. It gives you 45 minutes of free use, which is great except that the learning curve with JAWS is so steep that if you don't know how to use it, you are likely to get false positive in, um, in terms of what works and what doesn't. So you really need to make sure if you get testing done, you hire an outfit that knows what they're doing, or you uh, ask people with disabilities that are really comfortable with their own software. Hi, Nick. Hi. I wondered if you could give us a couple of examples, maybe a little bit of a chamber of horrors or something of some wildly, widely fielded and inaccessible software, stuff we would all have used. WinMerge is one. Um, obviously, Windows, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not as familiar with uh, Ubuntu or Linux software. Um, I must admit I'm a bit stuck on Windows for a variety of reasons, but um, WinMerge is not very friendly. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a bit of a brain fart, but I will get back to you on that. Um, hi, I was actually Hello. <laughs> um, I was actually going to ask with um, one of the things that's driven me crazy in Australia with some of the, um, uh, I guess, NGOs and such that deal with accessibility is the, and you, you mentioned JAWS before, the huge amount of money that's spent on proprietary um, accessibility tools. And um, when you actually look at, well, you know, if we got the world's best accessibility open source developers and hired them for a couple of years, you know, we'd easily catch up and overtake a lot of that functionality. I guess my question to you is from the accessibility community, you know, uh, how come there isn't that? Um, uh, well, what can we do, I guess, to help with that? And, and how come we haven't seen that enormous development gush to be able to re replace that? Because there's, there's the money, you know, there's a business case there. It's a great business case and there's a huge amount of money being spent that really shouldn't be needed to be spent. How do we make that argument? It's a tough battle. Uh, if you take JAWS in, um, in the United States, it's, I think, 900 US dollars. In New Zealand, it's $1,900 New Zealand. Um, so it's not cheap software. And one of the problems with that is that software is provided to people with vision impairments by whatever agencies, depending on, on where you are in the world. Uh, so most blind users can get their hands on JAWS. The problem being that the people who provide JAWS to these people are organizations that don't know any better. They know JAWS. They have a business relationship with um, the company. And the company is very good at 
pushing their product. What we need to do is first educate our users to tell them, hey, did you know you have a free excellent alternative to JAWS out there and you're not limited to being stuck with the same application without upgrades for 11 or 12 years, which is not, um, not unheard of. And at the same time, we have to educate the organization that fund and provide um, assistive software to tell them there is an alternative out there and you could provide more software to more people for a lot lesser uh, cost involved to you. It, it is definitely a, a battle that is very difficult, um, but it's a little bit outside of the um, FOSS application in general and making that accessible for all. Um, feel free to come by after and we can bump head and talk about it. Well, I guess my question is sort of the jewel to the Chamber of Horrors. Do you have a Hall of Fame? Can you name some applications that you would want to praise or recommend as role models, especially FOSS applications in terms of accessibility? That's uh, a little bit like the question I was asked previously, and, and I'm just not able to think of anything at the moment. Um, yeah, no I'm worries. sure that the moment the presentation is going to be over, I'm going to go, oh, of course. I'll put a whole lot of stuff on my website. Just go there. It'll be on their blog, and I'll have uh, example and information. Cool. Thanks. Hey, Dylan. Um, you were talking earlier about JAWS and saying there's a lot better alternatives out there. Um, could you give us an idea uh, what alternatives there are? Um, my organization, for example, um, has a massive license with JAWS because we do have requirements for accessibility, and we hate it because it's incredibly difficult to build into any standardized environment because uh, it just was never designed for it. So we spend hours tearing our hair out every time we try and update anything. Right, let me rephrase your question to make sure I heard it right. Uh, you're saying that you guys have requirement, but it's very difficult to comply with JAWS, and you'd like to know uh, alternative to JAWS? Yep, anything that can work just as well or even close to it would yep. be much preferred because it's a horrible program. There is a um, open source Linux-based um, screen reader out there, and Again, it is one that I'm having a total blank on. I'm not sure what's going on with my brains, but there is one, and um, I will find the name right after this, and I'll put that on my site as well. You mentioned that it's, throughout your talk, you mentioned it's quite difficult, and difficulty has been a, uh, a key word, I guess, in the conference, in a presentation, and I obviously I can see why, with, I mean, disabilities is difficult. Um, from a naive software developer's point of view, you're right, my software application itself is not particularly accessible, and, but I can already see ways that I can improve it. But why is it difficult? What would be the, why, why is things so difficult for disabilities? Is it just not, people just not writing good software or is it uh, uneducated people? What is the primary difficulty? There is, I think the first issue is awareness. Most developers either don't know about the need for access or don't understand what that need is or how they can implement that in their applications or don't see why their application needs to be accessible. And that awareness there is really what I was trying to talk about here because accessibility does apply to the vast majority of software if you do want to crack into those markets where they have a legal obligation to have accessible software. So that, that's one thing. The other thing is one of implementation. It is tricky sometimes to implement 
um, accessibility, especially if you try to retrofit. So if you have a source code that has collected changes and changes in developers and you're on version 5 and you're using legacy code and you're trying to clobber something together, it will take you three, four times as long than if you were doing it from scratch. So it's a little bit like you build a house and the doors are too narrow. If you want to widen the door, it'll make a mess, it'll take forever, and it'll be really expensive. But if you built it with the right door in the first place, it, it works. So that's another factor. And um, I think the other thing is people with disabilities are either not vocal enough about their needs or don't express themselves properly. So they just say, eh, your software doesn't work. And, and then that's it. So it, it, it's important that people with disabilities do take responsibility to talk to people that work and develop software so there's a, a conversation going on and everybody learns a little bit more. I'd, I'd, I'd just like to ask a, um, a quick question. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a difficulty in terms of interface between the accessibility community and, um, and the developer community in terms of POSIA. Yeah? Um, you, obviously, we need a lot more of you <laughs> <laughs> uh, out there advocating for accessibility stuff in POS, uh, in POS software. Yeah? Yep. Um, is there some way that we can, as a FOSS community, can actually develop that interface? There are several uh, groups that are both geeks and knowledgeable about accessibility. Um, there's the Guild of Accessible Web Designers out there that focuses on that kind of stuff. Now, the, the gods has gone a little bit dormant, but if we could create a user group to not necessarily develop standards, but just keep reminding people we have these needs and these are the things that we can do to make it easier, then, then we could spread the word. Um, I don't think it's going to happen overnight, but um, if we don't try it, we'll just go backwards and end up nowhere. I think that's it. Um, I'd invite anybody to just grab me by the ponytail if you need to talk to me over the, the weekend and uh, that'll stop me short. Thank you for all your questions. Thank you.